This week, we're going to dig into the braking system on this 1952 Ford F1. Got this universal speedway set up here. Let's see what it takes to get it in the truck. Here we go. Well, the first thing probably a lot of y'all are going to wonder is, <clears throat> anybody who's familiar with these body style trucks, they originally had the brake pedal and the brake assembly down under the uh, master cylinder down on the frame rail. We're not going to do that on this go around because I'm running power brakes and I'm running front disc. The original master cylinder was set up for four wheel drum. We're not running that setup anymore. But they do make this whole setup to still go down on the frame. The reason why we're not going to go down on the frame with this here setup, I plan on driving this truck a lot. I plan on it being on the road. With it being on the road, you have a mishap. The problem is whenever they put the aftermarket braking system down below, it pushes all of this assembly back. So let's just say originally your master cylinder was just one bowl and it was here. Well, in that same location, now you're putting a master cylinder or you're putting a booster and then a dual reservoir master cylinder, you're pushing it so far back to service this on the side of the road, you would have to pull the seat out of the truck. I don't plan on being broke down on the side of the road, but does anybody? So what we're going to do is mount this setup in the engine bay, shut the hood. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm not building a show truck as pretty as it is. It's not a show truck, but we're going to put this up on the firewall and that's going to be where her new home is. Now, let's get it there. Now, with this brake pedal assembly, it's obviously way too long. I mean, we're we're hanging out past the dash. We're right at flush with the dash on the end. But the end isn't where we're planning on mounting that. So what I need to do here is I need to take this here tape measure. Measure from the firewall to the edge of the dash. Twelve and a half. Remember that. So twelve point five. We're looking right there. Let's see. If we take this. Is there a there's multiple holes inside of this? Let's see if there's a hole location that we can put this through that'll put this hole at twelve point five. Well, actually over 12.5 because that 12.5 is going to be the edge of the dash and we're going to want to drill a hole and put this into the dash to give the front side structure. So this will be bolted to the firewall. This will be bolted to the bottom of the dash, adding all the structure back in because this truck was never a firewall mounted brake assembly. So you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of structure. So... If I go to this hole, right there, ooh, girl, that's it. So we just lop this off right here, leave that last hole. Whenever we bolt that in, it's going to leave that hole perfect. That hole right there is going to leave it perfect where we can drill up in and we can drill these holes and mount everything in and make it solid. Love it when a plane comes together. There we go. Nice clean edge. Ready for a little paint. What's y'all's favorite uh, paint whenever you're out in the garage? 
Y'all a Krylon, a Duplicolor, a uh, Rust-Oleum. I'm whatever's cheapest most of the time, but whenever it comes to anything that I'm going to be putting on a car that I care about, typically go for the old Duplicolor semi-gloss, which is pretty much what every everybody uses. Especially if you want to do it where you're standing right over top of your hood. You want to make sure that all that overspray goes right onto the part that you uh, care about. Now that we got this painted and it's not dry at all, let's get it reassembled. So that way, not permanently, we still got a lot to go. But this needs to be able to be set into the truck for mock up. So now that that is on there, place that on there. For no particular reason at all. We'll make sure that the nuts and bolts are going the same direction. I guess we're going to be fancy. You know, I actually do have OCD about that stuff. If it's bolts that are facing the same direction and everything like that. But... Right now, it's in the mock-up stage. Whenever we go to bolt it in there, you guarantee they're going to be the same direction. Unless for some reason it's in such an awkward angle, I can't put them both in the same way. Which then it'll just drive me crazy for the rest of the truck's life. So, let's get this held up into place and get some holes marked on the firewall. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this here pedal assembly. We're going to make sure our vice grips are set. Should be. It's the thickness of that. About yay. Ooh, that's pretty thick. Back her up a hair. All right. Now, we're going to take this pedal. Hold it up where we feel like it needs to sit. And where this seems to be. Well, that gum, if that couldn't be any more perfect, I don't know what in the world. All right, well, let me show you what we got here. We ended up being able to use the steering column bolt. That's exactly where it landed. And as of right now, I've got my drill just holding that on on there. Drilled the hole through, and I've just got that holding on there. So now I'll take that out, punch the hole bigger, put one bolt in it. Where are they? They're over there. Put one bolt in it, do the same thing to here. And then I'll put bolt in both sides. Then I can more easily get in there to do the other four. So let me get those four done real quick. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do about cutting that hole out of the center. All right. Now that we have these four holes punched in it from the uh, brake pedal assembly on the other side. Now that we have these four holes, I just took a straight edge and marked across and found center. Now we're just going to take our hole saw bit that I've already made sure that the hole saw is larger than the diameter of the rod that's going to go through the firewall. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and punch this hole. Get that lined up. We're going to take it off a of hammer mode.
Well, in the middle of all that, we had to uh, run and go get a new drill bit because we uh, ate all the teeth off of that one. This is a junk one I had sitting around, but it is 9.45 right now. We had to go to the Home Depot, which is further than the other hardware store we have close to us. But the only one that's open right now is the furthest one away. So had to stop, jump in the car, run and go get that. Otherwise, we'd have been dead in the water until the morning. And uh, my goal is to have all this bolted together tonight so that way tomorrow we can run brake lines and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, let's keep going. Now we got the hole punched. We got the four holes drilled. Let's get the uh, booster mounted and keep rolling. First, I want to get all these shavings out of here. Uh, punching this hole, cutting it with that hole saw really made a mess. So. That'll work. Now we'll get we'll get this booster put in here. Let me pop, pop off this mass cylinder real fast. See, this is what's nice about having patinaed trucks and stuff. People ask you why you don't paint them and everything, but whenever you can just set stuff on the fender or bang stuff around, even if you're not meaning to, but it's just nice. You don't have to worry about it. Don't stress. Worry about the pretty paint. Well, as I'm sure y'all figured, those don't line up for nothing. So let me go get a wallering tool. All right, guys. So here's where we're ending it with for the night. We've got the booster mass cylinder mounted and we figured out what our flaws are. So unfortunately, this sits really far over. Now, I can't do anything about that. The reason why it landed there is where the pedal needs to be on the inside of the truck <clears throat> is the shaft of the pedal is just to the right hand side of the steering column. So unless I would have put the pedal to the left hand side and used left foot braking, which I, I, just doesn't seem safe to me. I'm used to right hand braking with everything, even manual. So I'm gonna leave it right hand braking. It just moves the master cylinder over a little bit further than what we wanted, which that's not a problem. The only reason why that would ever be an issue is if you're doing an engine swap. But even then, it's still not a problem. But we ran into issue number two. Our air cleaner doesn't fit anymore because this sits so far over. So, I guess I'll jump online and order a new one and then tomorrow we're gonna make the brake lines coming out of here going down and tying into our brakes that were already existing on the truck and then connect our brake line in the rear to the rear axle bleed the brakes and then we'll go on to the next step We've got, hopefully I can get it all done in this video. My plan is to pull the tank out, put the new sending unit in the tank. And then uh, once the new sending unit is the tank, we can fully plumb the fuel system for good and we can go for a drive. Good morning. After I slept on it last night, I was trying to think of the best way. Because if you see right here, see the, pot, the bottom of the pedal? Bottoms out on the 
steering, but that wouldn't be an issue if I just raise the pedal up. Then by the time that it bottoms out, it's there. But that seems like it's very far up. I like it better being lower. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take our little forked piece here. And take our pin. I know bottomed out once you passed the uh, steering shaft. I did it last night. Once you push it all the way bottomed out, you're not touching the firewall. So what I need to do is figure out how far we want this to thread in. So, I actually really like that pedal placement, but I know it's going to bottom out. I mean, we're already hitting the steering, and it's bottoming out, but I'm going to bend right in here, use some heat, and tweak it. I'm going to bend right in here over this way and then right in here <clears throat> I'm gonna raise the pedal a little bit so all of this will stay where it's at and I'll have adjustment in and out but I'll just be able to tweak the pedal arch a little more so we're about to leave the house and go do some stuff this morning, and while we're out, I'm gonna go take that pedal to my shop where I've got a torch, a full torch set up here. I've just got one of those little butane setups, but I got my my full big oxygen torch set up. And uh, so we just got back from running some errands and going to getting this worked out. I plan on filming it for you, but wind up just jumping into it not really taking the time to film it but here's what we came up with so that's off centered and that's kinked a little bit more so let's see how it fits before i paint it i'll tell you right now already i like the way that that fits on there a whole lot better but, but. all right everybody so we got a lot of work done it's actually 11.05 right now at night so last time I talked to y'all it was earlier in the day while this brake pedal was drying up with paint I started chasing around some of the uh loose end wiring and stuff like that around the truck that needed to be done and needless to say, tying up some loose ends took up the majority of the day. Stuff that I wanted to get done this weekend anyway, but it was it was all the small, tedious stuff that wasn't worth filming. Trying to find what brake lights aren't working, stuff like that. Finally got everything chased down. Also got me a parts list ordered for tomorrow. I got a brake light switch coming for the brake line, or for the brake uh, pedal assembly. I got a brake light switch coming. I've got a new air cleaner because of the um, uh, master cylinder hitting the um, old 14-inch air cleaner that was on there. So we got another air cleaner on its way. It's ugly, but that's what we got. Um, what else? Brake line. I ordered a whole new brake line kit because uh, I could not put my hands on my flaring tool. So got me a brand new flaring tool coming. But since I ordered that, I ordered a brake line kit that came with more brake line and everything. So all that will be here tomorrow so we can get the brake lines in. But since we're doing all of that, I went ahead and got the new sending unit put in the tank. Now, 
you say, that doesn't look very new. It doesn't. But I put all brand new guts and cut the hat off of that one and put it on the new sending unit for the dolphin gauges because that one has six holes around the top and the one for the dolphin gauges has five holes around the top and the dolphin gauge one is a smaller diameter than that one. There's no way it would work without doing that to it. So had to modify it. Wish I would have taken more video of it, but I got to rolling and it went it went smooth once I got going. Also, you never know. So make sure you have it. But you'll notice a lot of that wiring is taken care of. That was all dangling down here. Um, as of now, I've got the uh, We've got the reverse lights on a switch because it's still with the reverse light wiring and everything for the truck. But I went with a switch just in case if you're ever working on something like right now, if we needed to hook up a trailer, I can just do this and I don't have to be in reverse. So it's a lot easier, a lot better to have it that way. But anytime you go to back up at night, just flip the light switch. Just pop her in reverse. Flip the light switch. It's simple. Ain't nothing to overthink. But y'all can see that break in there. I'm sure y'all saw me work the pedal before, but I got everything all set now that it's in here in place. Let me pop that key out of the way so you can see. And the keychain that's on there also is for the chicken ranch. Chicken Ranch, LaGrange, Texas. What y'all think about that? But, let's see the pedal. I got y'all in a bind. Let me hold you back here. So, super simple to work. I tried to put y'all right here and uh, stop me. But, I'm really happy with it. It's very comfortable. Feels natural. I haven't tested to make sure that that still works. Oh yeah, so that's the sound of a cow. I haven't even tried that since I got everything wired. I knew it was hooked up, but I hadn't tested it. Next thing we're going to get into here is uh, this fan switch. I think we got a uh, dead one. So we know it's going to be a gusher because we're already full of coolant. But how fast can we? Slip and stab. Wasn't too bad. Toss that one down on the ground. I think that one's bad. I don't know for sure. But my fan, I know I've got power. And I was letting the truck run before. And uh, we were going above on, on thermostat, on thermostat, on uh, temperature gauge on the truck. We were going above our temperature. Now, that's not to say... That temperature gauge ain't wrong. But two wrongs don't make a right. So we're going to 
take one thing out of the equation because we know it wasn't kicking on. Check it first. All right, guys. So that's it for tonight. Where we're ending it with this evening, we have full brake pedal assembly done. We are waiting on the uh, light switch for the run the brake lights. Cool. That's done. We need brake lines running down. That Hopefully, we can start on that tomorrow. I don't know for sure. But if it shows up in enough time, we're going to get those brake lines run. We have our new temperature switch in for our fan. We're going to get the fuel tank hooked up. We're going to fill the tank up with a five-gallon can. That's all I got here with me was five-gallon can. But be able to see our gauges work on the fuel filler. And then also we're going to let it run. Before we let it run, we need to fill up that trans fluid. We don't know if this transmission is going to work or not. The only way we're going to find out is top her off. She says she's empty. We're going to fill her up. We're going to jack the rear end up, knock it in gear, see if we can see these tires move or not. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know. I don't have any history on this transmission at all. Uh, I got it from a guy I work with. He's never seen it run. I've never seen it run. It's a mystery transmission. We threw it in here. So tomorrow we're going to find out. If we've got transmission, we might wind up having to pull this out and going to grab one of my other turbo 350s I got laying around. Um, we'll see. But uh, tomorrow, we're going to definitely see the truck fire up. We're at least going to see it run. We're going to try to put it in gear, see if we can get gears out of it. Um, I think that's where we're going to end it right now. Tomorrow, if we can get the brake line, and we do have a good transmission, we're going to try to go for a drive. That's what I want for me. And uh, if I can get it on video for y'all, awesome. But for me, that's what I want. I've owned this truck since I was seven years old. And I'm 28. And I've only driven this truck a handful of times. So every time I've driven it, it's had a different engine. Whenever it had the flathead, I drove it a handful of times. First go around. And... Uh, and it was fun, but this time, it, everything is right. Everything's done right. This is the first time it's been this, this far along. Every time it's been first go around, we pulled some leaf springs out of the factory leaves and lowered it down. It had some big, giant, oversized white walls on it. Uh, they were 31 inches tall. I don't even know if you can buy white walls that tall anymore, but it had 31 inch tall white walls on it and it was lowered down with just a couple of leaves taken out. And then I switched it over to bias fly, uh, Coker classics, and then drove it around a little bit like that. And that's whenever I, uh, set it down on the highway and, or not on the highway up here on, uh, our little main road over here coming through my town. And, uh, Whenever I was driving down the road, I didn't know. I was so young trying to figure this stuff out. I didn't know how much slack you were able to take out of the front steering box. I didn't know anything about setting steering angle. I didn't know nothing about how to put the engine cradle in. I just put it all together. Come to find out my engine smacked my steering rod there was too much slop. My alignment was off. I got death wobble going down the road. I almost put the truck in the ditch. So it scared me and I put it away and I haven't touched it since. Really, that was the time that I did that. But since then, I've built a handful of other cars. I've got, a, I built a, a 66 F100 that had the Crown Vic suspension. And that was fun. That was fun as all heck. And then I got the station wagon i've got a couple other cars but yeah you know, this time i said you know what let's put it together with the straight axle i want to see myself make the straight axle work so we've done a lot of work to make that happen the only other thing besides everything you see that's done here that i really want to do is uh front and rear sway bars i want to make front and rear sway bars work with the straight axle out back straight axle out front I know it can be done. I know they sell a kit 
For the 53 to 56, this is the 52. It is a whole different body style truck. But I think one day we might try to make them work. But I don't own it yet. So that's my uh, next hopeful goal. But that and putting AC and all that stuff on it. And I'm rambling. All right. Y'all get to sleep. I'm going to get to sleep. I'll see y'all in the morning. All right, guys. Sunday, just got home from church. So, we're going to dig into this truck. We got more parts on their way, like we talked about. They're not here yet. Next thing we got to do is get this thing jacked up. Let's get the fuel system hooked up. Let's go ahead and get all that stuff done. Let's get the trans fluid and everything topped off so we can fire this truck up and see where we're at. See if we have it running. See if we have a good working transmission. Make sure that all that stuff is in the right order and make sure all that's good to go before the brake system stuff even shows up. Because if we don't have brake system, or if we don't have a good running truck, it doesn't matter if we have brakes. So let's go ahead and get all that stuff dialed in and we'll go from there. So let me get this truck jacked up and we'll see what we can do. Well, our order showed up. So, on our order, we got a brake light switch. And the style I went with was this one where you mount this hard on one end, and you mount this to your pedal. So, every time you're hitting the brakes, you're pulling, and it's turning the switch on. So, you're turning your lights on. Never used this style before, but it seems very simple. So we're going to give it a shot, see how it does. If it doesn't work, we'll come up with something else. But we got that in, so we'll do that here in a minute. We got our brake or, uh, trans fluid topped off. We now have our stuff that we can build our brake lines. We haven't started on that yet, but we have it. And we got this. It's ugly. I don't like it, but it was $30 and it was in here in two days for brand new Chrome. Nowadays in 2024, $32, that's cheap as you're going to get, but that will now be up there, uh, making the carburetor look terrible, but it's there. So. I've already fired it up. I know I cheated. I didn't bring y'all along, but I had to make sure everything was running right. And in Texas right now, in Houston, it is 47 degrees. That is cold. Nothing around here is tuned for that. We are not prepared for that. So I did get it a little warmed up. All right, let's see if we got reverse. Or we ain't got brakes, so. We got reverse. Let's go for neutral. Drive. We got drive. Let's go back for neutral. Let it spin to a stop. Test this brake light switch out here. Ooh, man. There we go. Brake lights. No brake lights. Brake lights. Turn signal. Nice. So what I like about the fact that both of those come on at the same time is... These little Model A stop tail lights. They're bright, but that's really bright. So it's just a little extra insurance so I don't get rear-ended. So we got that. Headlights are all working. All turn signals and everything work up front. Everything is all hooked up in here. 
brake lights go into that switch. That worked out fantastic. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Let me shut these off. So the only thing left interior is this is wipers. And I have a brand new, there it is. I have a brand new whole wiper kit for this truck. Electric motor wiper kit, yeah. 51 and 52 Ford truck conversion 12 volt. Yeah, so I have that, that to go in. That's the last interior wiring piece that is left. Everything else is all tied in. Everything else is done. Now, we did not get it running and on the street. We tried, we tried, we tried. I actually ran into some other problems today. Uh, my wife's car, we, she went to go do the uh, tire rotation on it. She likes to do that stuff. She's very handy with all that kind of stuff. She likes to do her own tire rotations and oil changes and everything. So she went to go do a tire rotation today and found a uh, bubble on the side of the tire, on the inside of the tire. So we had to stop what we're doing, drag up, shut everything down, because I'm not gonna let my wife drive around with a bubble on her tire. I would, I but, that's also me. I'm not going to put my wife and my daughter in that same situation. So, uh, we shut down, went and ran and grabbed her another tire that pushed all of us behind, but it's a price you pay. You want your family to be safe. I am fine with us not making our deadline on the truck for this week because my daughter and wife are safe. So with that being said, next week, we're going to drive the truck, but I've got a lot to do. I'm going to try to get all this wrapped up during the week. Maybe get out a second video this week because of that. Because brake lines are made. Um, we also found out we have a dead alternator. So I have another alternator sitting here. Went, my, my dad happened to be at the shop today. So I asked him if he could pull that alternator off and bring it over here. So he pulled that and uh, I'm gonna swap that one out with this one. And then I need to move the thermostat from this location up to the front. I'm still not getting my fans turning on with it back here. I'm gonna move it forward. I was able to put my hand on the side of that uh, pedestal where the thermostat is uh, earlier while the truck was running. It was hot, but it wasn't burning my fingers. I, at the same exact moment I did that, I reached up here and touched this and it burned the crap out of me. So we're not getting as hot back there as we are up in the front to kick on our fan. So I'm gonna move that, see if that works, see if that helps. We'll go from there. Um, we still have this brake line to tie in. Need to take that one out and put that one in. Should be a pretty simple deal. Um, and then bleed the brakes and she's ready to go. All right, guys, that's gonna be it. We're gonna get this all wrapped up next week on our, we're gonna get this wrapped up during the week and y'all will see it next week. But um, we also, are gonna start digging into another project. So y'all, y'all get ready. I don't know if we'll have it all on this video, like just the truck on next video and then do the next one or what I know I'm about to start, give y'all a hint, station wagon stuff. So we're gonna see what happens there. And uh, this truck is gonna be wrapped up. We got a uh, big block to bring home, tear apart the garage. It's going to be scattered all over the place, but this truck's got to get out of here so we can do that. So y'all come back next week, check it out. Uh, as for the truck, it's pretty much done. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have fun. See y'all. All right. I couldn't let it be on the next episode because I said, well, let me go ahead and just dig this alternator off here. I 
I don't know what's going on inside of there, but I'm gonna say that's why it's uh, not working. But, uh, all right, now y'all can, can get back to life.